So moving on then to the next uh, next question. I really like in the book, you've got some um, really good do's and don'ts of the application process. Maybe Sarah, we can touch upon some of your favorite uh, favorite do's and favorite don'ts yeah. for people applying so they can uh, they can stand out sure i would say in terms of the do's for application forms uh deadlines you've got to know when they are you've got to be organized you've got to submit your application form well in advance of the deadline i didn't know this when i first started applying for training contracts but some firms will invite their uh, successful applicants to interview on a first come first serve basis so rather than waiting yep. until all until the application deadlines passed and then reviewing all of the applications in one go um, they'll do it on that first come first serve basis and remember all the time how competitive this is don't let someone else take that training contract space just because they've been more organized than you and got in there a month before you so know when the deadlines are and submit your application form in advance yeah, that's a that's a that's a brilliant point. And I know from when I was um, helping out with the graduate recruitment at a big management consultancy, you'd you'd have a steady flow of uh, applications in, and then it would sort of you know slowly rise towards the end. So say if the deadline was December, mm. come the end of December, you would just have an avalanche of all of these applications in. Yeah, it's um, harder you know, to stand out if, then, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. If you're one of you know ten applications received in a day compared to one of 200 applications received mm. on the last day it just makes it so much more difficult yeah no totally agreed um i'd also say that terminology is really important for your application forms something that i've learned from since doing the book and talking to some students at universities is that students tend to think firms are companies don't call them companies in your application form that's a big no-no and it shows that you haven't really understood the business structure as is calling a firm by another firm's name that we spoke about before. <laughs> it's just a big no-no. And it's easy to do if you've done a copy and paste job. Nobody nobody likes that and your application will go in the bin. So those are two big no-nos that do crop up more than you'd think. In terms of terminology, some smaller firms prefer to be called niche rather than high street. So if you're applying to a smaller firm, I would just have a look on their website and see how they refer to themselves and I'd mimic it in the application form because you don't want to offend anybody and call them high street when they want to be called niche commercial or you know vice versa um, and it's the same if you have regional firms that have really high quality work in a particular area and would prefer to be likened to you know medium-sized commercial firm rather than a regional neighbor of theirs so just just have a look at the website and see how they are referring to themselves that's the safest bet. I'd also recommend um, copy and pasting all the long form questions in the application form into Word. And this will allow you to keep an eye on both the word count and spelling and grammar. Don't go over the word count, whatever you do. Way better to be 50 words under than five words over. Some application forms will just cut you off automatically, but some won't. And if you're over the word limit, then all you're showing is that you you can't adhere you can't adhere to any instructions and that you can't be concise so don't do that uh, again you've got to be checking your application before you submit it because it's so competitive firms really are looking for any reason to whittle down applicants so if you've got a spelling mistake you're out so definitely check it yep and my last do for application forms is choose your language really carefully don't use redundant language so think about the words you're using and make sure that you're always using action verbs verbs like, like innovated generated overhauled don't use passive words like i helped or i assisted i supported you want to be giving the person you're speaking to a really colorful image of what you did and what you can do in the future so don't don't use those um passive words use the action verbs and don't stop there quantify the effect of that action verb to really hit home the point so for example when working in the property department i generated that's your action verb a set of precedent email responses for clients faqs so now you quantify it 
This ensured consistency throughout the department as to what is conveyed to clients and enabled the department to communicate more efficiently. So you can see that it's much better than I helped um, I helped a my supervisor to generate precedent email responses because that doesn't tell you anything at all and you've really done down what you did towards that. Uh, that's a brilliant point. And one uh, one thing I'd add just linked to that is um, when you're talking about things specifically, maybe more at university is, um, you know, talk about what you did as opposed to what a group did. Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, they, they're not they're not hiring the group. They're, they're hiring you. Yeah. So make sure you, you know, you blow your own trumpet and you, you talk about the talk about the impact that you made. Yeah, you must. You absolutely must. No one else is going to do it for you. No, definitely. So we've had some brilliant do's there. How about some of the don'ts that you that you see that hold people back? I think that the only thing I'd say on this is, well, the best advice I can give you in terms of the don'ts is don't do bulk applications. Like we said before, I think that's the, that's the point I really want to um, labour. It will be so obvious to the person reading your application that you haven't done enough research if if you do do bulk applications. Fewer high quality applications, far far better. That's uh, that's brilliant advice.